Grace, thank you so much for joining me today on the Tiny Sessions podcast. No problem. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's lovely to have you. For anyone who hasn't heard of you um, and hasn't heard about your space, could you just tell us a little bit about you and your background, please? Yeah, so um, I've always been a bit of a lover of small spaces. It's always been my thing. Since I was a little girl, I always have Wendy houses. Mm. Um, and in my bedroom, I'd make my space as small as possible. Um, and then when I was at university, one of my friends who bought a narrow boat to open the world of small houses to me in that tiny minimal living and that's sort of where my journey started really and I found um Bryce Langston's YouTube channel as most people have have done yeah um, and then I delved into all of the sort of sustainability around living small and everything like that and ended up just biting the bullet sort of during during Covid really just just before Covid um and just going for it and and just digging myself into it and sort of have developed a bit of a community around what I've done really I've been in, in newspapers and all sorts so it's been quite nice I've sort of developed a few f- and friends out of it yeah. and yeah now I'm just I'm here I'm, I'm parked on my parents farm so it's quite handy where, I'm, where I am and I'm, I'm local to my parents which was great through Covid um, and it's just a great place for me to be beautiful countryside so I just I wouldn't be able to afford to live anywhere like this without yeah sort of in this small space that I'm in so yeah it's it's been a bit of a, a bit of a whirlwind of experience but yeah yeah it's such a short space of time as well yeah yeah I mean we I bought the house in um September 2019 I bought it and I bought it okay. off eBay, so it was just the trailer and the shell nothing else had been done to it, it was literally just the, the framework which I knew I would never be able to do on my own and it was built by a company um called Tiny Eco Homes that are up in Northumbria in England yeah so, I knew it was built safely and I knew it was yeah. built safely. Um, so I, I sort of just went for it and it sat on the drive. It sat on the drive from the September through till the April when COVID came. And we had quite a bad storm in the UK. It was called Storm Dennis and it was yes. just horrendous. And it absolutely obliterated the shell of this house. I mean, like when I came to actually opening the doors, the house was full of water. Oh, no. it, was sort of a, it was a bit of a, a shock to my system, but at the same time, I'm glad it happened before I put, it every, put everything in it and, you know, yeah. it happened and flooded all of my um, sort of everything that was in here. So I um, made the start on patching up all the outside with the help of my uncle, who's a carpenter. And then COVID came, so obviously I couldn't have people here. Oh, so yeah. You've either got to get on with it and learn and do it yourself and DIY it, or we've got to sit and wait. And I'm a bit too impatient. So I just cracked on and, and sort of taught myself a lot of it. YouTube was my best friend. My partner was an absolute superstar at helping. And he did uh, a lot of more sort of complicated stuff that I wouldn't know what to do with. Like yeah. Stuff. He dealt with all those sorts of things. Um, and then, yeah, it just, it took us, it took us six months. So it took us six months through COVID to completely kit it all out. And we moved within the September. So I wow. had for 12 months as such. So um she's settled now oh your dogs are so lovely we knew that she would settle <laughs> wow but, so you did that in six months so was that full time like work because of lockdown were you able to just solely work on the tiny house it was it was evenings and weekends I was, was I was working full time um and probably more than I've ever worked in my entire life we were yeah. making and sanitizer so it was super super busy yeah. um it was to be honest with you it was a bit of an escape on the weekend from work yeah. um, and we just chipped away at it in the evenings we had a big a big light plugged inside of it as soon as I got power we were good to go yeah um, and I just we just chipped away at it every night every weekend so for the six month period really and I we were really fortunate that a, a colleague is also um a carpenter so he was able to help with a few bits that I just was a bit unsure of yeah um, I mean, the night the nightmare thing was doing it in a pandemic. I couldn't get my hands on anything. I couldn't get my hands yes, on these all the materials, everything. And I'd go to a DIY shop, and the shelves were just empty. So there was sort of, you know, I, I probably could have done it cheaper if I'd have been patient and waited because I did pay a premium for everything with it being yeah. in a pandemic. But on the other hand, you know, I could do it myself, which I probably wouldn't have done. Yeah, and yeah. We had a really nice experience building it rather than just sort of, you know having it done by someone else which yeah I get the same feeling I sit in it and think I look at it and think I've done this myself this is my yeah work. you have that satisfaction don't you exactly, exactly yes yeah. it's, oh. it's oh it's so lovely can you just um describe the layout of your tiny yeah, so house I'm sort of sat in the corner of it so I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm in what I like to call the living room it's yeah 
Um, and then it's just, so it's a 20 foot trailer that I've got. So I've got the bathroom at the end and then I've got the loft space upstairs. And I then see. it's quite a generic layout for a tiny house, but I can yes. swivel, and swivel and sort of show you. Yeah. Um, so we've got the staircase oh, here. Yeah. Kitchen, yeah. The bathroom has got a full size shower and toilet and then two wardrobes. Amazing. And then my loft space is just up the top. Oh, lovely. Oh, that is so nice. Oh, it's all so nice and compact. It um, is, but it feels very open as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I I am denied about doing the dark paint because everything I read was like, stay white, keep it nice and bright, keep it light, keep it airy. Um, so I did I did all of that trying to think, right, I need to keep it nice and fresh. But yeah. I, I quite like small, cosy spaces. So I knew that going up to bed, I wanted it to feel like a den. Yeah. So um, we went with that dark green, which is a bit of a bold move, um, but I'm so glad I did it because it, it feels like it breaks the space up. I feel like I've got rooms it, within yeah. the, in the space without sounding bizarre. Um, and it's nice up there because it's nice and dark and got blackout blinds. So oh. uh, I sort of I planned that because my partner's a DJ, so he works night normally. Yeah. Um, the idea was I could sort of leave him in a darkened corner and, and yeah. not like disturb him really. So um yeah it's it's been a nice cozy space to be in that's for sure oh that's so lovely I'd love to know because you've only been in it for a short amount of time really and um I'd love to know how do you keep your space cool in the summer um but then not damp in the winter yeah that's that's been that's been a challenge and yeah to living in it helps with that situation okay um, I think if you, I mean, I, my original intention was to always Airbnb this at some point. That was always yeah. my intention. And I've sort of come to learn that it it's not going to be wise for this space to become an Airbnb um, because it needs to be lived in. The pipes need to be insulated in the winter, in the, yeah. in the summer it needs to be opened up. So um, the way that the shell's been designed, there's a lot of ventilation. The minute you open the windows, it's a cross breeze across the across the top or across through the through the building and actually it was warmer in this house um in the summer than it was in my parents house really coming through it which was great yeah um, so that and, and you just you, you spend a lot more time outside in the summer you, you know you live outdoors which is sort of what I wanted as part of this experience of yeah living so I spent a lot of time with the door open in the garden um in the winter, the only thing that I would change as to what I've done with my current build is I haven't got underfloor heating. So the floor okay. is cold in the winter. Yeah. Um, so I tend to put rugs out and stuff when it gets a bit cooler. Um, but the actual, it doesn't take much to heat. I mean, I can put the kettle on and I'm, I'm warm in here. It doesn't take a lot because it's such a small space. Yeah. The insulation is, I put the thickest possible insulation I can get my hands on. Okay. Um, and every gap I filled with, you know, filler and <laughs> there's no gaps it's in the world. It's worth it. And I've just got these tiny little heaters that are down here. Oh, I see. Um, yep. And they cost me like £25 and they're electric heaters and they yeah. just do the job. Um, mm. And that's all I've really needed. So I've got two of them. I've got one in the bathroom. So that sort of heat rises into the loft. Yeah. And I've just got one here that I move depending on where I'm, where I'm sat. So I'm either sort of, I either point it at myself in the kitchen or I put it you know on the on the sofa or whatever so yeah it doesn't take a lot to heat the only thing is the floor I think if I was gonna sort of think about it again you'd would have that insulation in the floor yeah. repeated flooring or, yeah. or something I mean, that's I'm a really good girl. tip I love slippers so yeah. I'm all right with my partner who's walking around in barefoot <laughs> in the morning yeah that's a really good tip especially for someone who's sort of thinking about their build as well because I think it's always really worrying about especially within the winter with the damp idea of things that's the last thing that you want and sometimes you can't avoid it but it's really reassuring to know that a lot of the time it is just a case of making sure everything is heated and ventilated and things like that's that it. I mean having a nice bit of airflow I've got a dehumidifier so I've got a small dehumidifier okay. which I plug in you know I've got that on all the time it's just sort of down the corner here by the sofa because I, um, I just you know anything that I can do to get a little bit of moisture out I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll move a little bit of air but um, yeah. no it's it's um the, the only main problem that I had was it underneath the sofa where the, the air wasn't sort of circulating. Yes. The floor slowly, slightly rose up a little bit. I noticed I tried to pull the sofa out. Oh, you couldn't. <laughs> oh, God. And the floor had come up by a couple of inches. Just oh, wow. Just the other day it got damp. So, you know, now if t this sofa that I'm sat on, it's actually one of those pull-out double beds from Ikea. Yes. So I just made sure to remove the bottom half of the bed so I can keep some air going through it in the winter. Yeah. Um, we just actively just now 
live in it going right okay every other week let's just pull the sofa out and let's leave the cupboards yeah. open and just it's that living in it and knowing what's going to be affected by what that sort yeah of eye on really um and then the summer was a doddle it was just it was just doors open and it was fine so ah oh, oh, so really it's just the winter that's really really helpful to know I would love to know um because you told us that you uh are really lucky that you've been able to have your space um put within the surroundings of your parents farm if you couldn't have done that what route might you have gone down do you think probably a van yeah <laughs> a transit van yeah which I know is what you're doing and yeah. um, I I mean I was really fortunate because my 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 dad works in property so he understands planning permission and boundaries and all that sort of stuff so I knew that where our boundaries were here and I knew what I would what I would need and I, and I was sorted I see yeah that element made it a lot easier and I think I do you know having spoken to a lot of people through this whole journey now a lot of people the first thing they'll ask me is how did you get your land where did you go yeah. you know it's a big struggle for a lot of people and unfortunately our government haven't made it easy for us no. um but at the same time um I think once you've got that that pot of land you're all right you know um it's just getting it and and yeah. I really fortunate and I it's, I find it I, I always I always feel like a bit of a fraud when I have people ask me questions about it on Instagram or whatever if I do a bit oh, of a or no, you're not. Oh, where, where did you get your land how'd you get it and I always think oh I can't help you I'm this is the one bit that like oh. I can't help with because I just was so fortunate um yeah. and I, I do think you know if it had been a little bit different I do think that I would have probably done a van instead just because I know I would have been able to move that around a bit more um, and probably get away with being parked on a driveway a bit more than a 20 yeah. foot break. Point. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, I can't hide this. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I probably would have done that because I did, I did want to do the minimal living um, and that was something I really wanted to do because I'm yeah. really lucky. I had a really lovely upbringing. My parents live in this beautiful farmhouse and I've had a lot of space and I've had a lot of things around me for a, a lot of years. Yeah. And, I just didn't want to do that anymore I was bored of, of just having stuff that I didn't use so I wanted I wanted this lifestyle so whether it was in a tiny house or whether it was going to be in a van or you know however it was going to be it, I was definitely going to do it it was just yeah. a case of what way was feasible for me really oh that's really interesting it's interesting as well that you would have gone for something else if you couldn't have had it in that space as well I think it is hard in the UK because I think it does tend to put a halt and put barriers up for us and there are ways to still do it but it just just makes it trickier doesn't it yeah definitely definitely they've definitely not made it easy for us <laughs> no hopefully fingers crossed one day that might change <laughs> you never know <laughs> I'd love to know how you get your how you've got your water and your electricity to your space yeah so I'm parked next to um a Dutch barn so what was an old sort of sheep and, and farm barn and that has got power. So I've, um, I didn't do it. We had, I had a family friend come and do this one for me, but we changed this, a generic sort of 13 amp plug that you would get in the wall of a house. Yeah. In 16 amp plug, which like you plug a camper van in or a motorhome. Um, and I run all of my power off that one cable. Um, oh, so amazing. I'm really stingy with my power. Everything that's in here is, is for camping and caravans. So it's low voltage. Yeah. Um, so I've got a lot of things, you know, my kettle is gas. So I've got a lot of gas things, my hot water heaters gas. Um, so everything is, is run on low power. These heaters, they're all low power. So, um, I don't really require an awful lot of electricity. Um, dogs fidgeting, sorry. Um, <laughs> right. and, I, and then my water, I've got a water tank. So I've got, um, quite a large water tank that's built on to sort of what I call the garage at the back of the tiny house. Yeah. And um, that just requires filling up. At the moment, I mean, for both Craig and I, we generally can go about a week, but we're in and out the shower and we are yeah. washing up the smallest amount of water possible. Um, but if we're, you know, if we're feeling a bit crazy and we've gone for a long shower or whatever, generally sort of every five days, I'll fill it back up again. Okay. I can run it and I can just plug the hose pipe in and just have it all linked to a hose pipe. But um, I just don't like that. I just have this fear of it's bursting off and I'm just going to waste yeah, loads of water. Yeah, yeah makes me a bit more aware of what I'm using knowing that I'm working off a tank um, yeah. and then I get about about 35 litres of hot water at a time so I've got quite a lot of hot water to play with when I put the hot water heater on oh, and that gosh. generally takes 20 minutes or so so it's not a long wait for me to sort of have a shower or whatever yeah um, and yeah it's just sort of once a week let's do the chores we empty the toilet you know we fill the tank up yeah so sort of once a week chores really 
and I guess it just becomes the norm as well after you've done it for so long it just really becomes have it now. we just know on a Sunday it's the first thing we do when we get up in the morning on a Sunday it's just like right let's head to the toilet get we it sort of rock the so who's doing what job <laughs> who's getting the toilet um, but no it's all it's all it's all very very easy to to do once you've got your head around that you're living in a tiny house you're not living in a house yeah. you know it's you're, you're essentially you're living in a camper van or a caravan or a motorhome you know it, it, it's got to be maintained and I think people sort of want to come and just have this amazing lifestyle in a small space and and they don't want all the stuff that comes with it so yeah you have to change your mindset about how you live and you have to be willing to spend a Sunday doing a few chores yeah um, but it's a small price to pay for a cheaper way of living you know yeah, mortgage free and flat so yeah exactly that's the thing isn't it you don't have to worry about mortgages and all those extra bills as well and things like that yeah. which just I think makes life easier on a whole <laughs> I think it's fantastic um, would there be anything that you would do differently now that the build's complete is there anything where you sort of say to yourself oh I would have done this in a different order or I would have done this so for example when you said about the floor and you would have added the heated floor of it and is there anything else I mean the heated floor is my main thing that's yeah. the, the one thing that I'm like 100% I wish I'd put that in um because I, I think would also help with the damp a little bit in the winter um but I mean layout wise I'm I'm really happy with the layout I, I love the layout I've I've made a few conscious decisions about not having a tv on the wall no sorts of things just so I didn't have space invaded so I'm, yeah. I'm happy with that there's there's a small gap between my shower and my wardrobe that if I was to go back on doing it I would close that gap because yeah <laughs> it's dust crap but it's a nightmare to try and clean I can't quite put my hoover in there <laughs> um but no generally I mean it, it it's it's lived in and, and I and I've, I've learned to live with a few of its flaws I mean that the um I've wired the lights so that upstairs, if I go, if I come downstairs and turn the lights on for upstairs, I can turn them off upstairs so I can get up safely, but then I yeah. can't forget about not turning them back on to use a switch down here. So, but that's a oh, wire. I see. I, yeah. I had no idea about that. So, um, and I mean, everything else I, I love, you know, I, I wouldn't really change anything else about it really. It's just, um, I've not I didn't intend on having dogs I didn't intend on having a puppy so I might have made oh. a bit more room for her um <laughs> she's, on, she's in my space all the time yeah. right? um, but no other than that I wouldn't really change anything it's 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 been an amazing space I think I, I would have put a composting toilet in for me because I'm yeah. you know I'm fussed about that sort of thing but my intention was to always at some point Airbnb this so yeah. I knew trying to explain composting to people who were you know coming for a holiday yeah um, it's not really feasible so I've, I've used a cassette chemical toilet rather than a composting one so I yeah think just for me personally I would have put a composting toilet in but I always have that that long-term goal of eventually yeah. it's going to be airbnb yeah definitely oh it's really interesting it's always nice to hear if there's any tweaks that you would have made um as, as I say especially when people are doing it at the start it's really handy did you have like any inspiration so you said about Bryce um are there any books or youtube or instagram accounts that are, were like a really good little focus or inspiration point for you during your build yeah so um the there is an instagram account that is um run by a guy called harry i don't know if you've ever come across him it's uh, it's it's called tiny house um and he's got hundreds of thousands of followers and i followed it for years and years and when i finally got it actually chatting to him I realised he was at, he went to the same university that I went to, no. and it's just a complete passion thing. He doesn't own his own tiny house. He will one day, um, and he all he, you know his whole Instagram is around finding something that he likes and sharing it. So oh, wow! He was really like for me, some of the stuff that he would find on Instagram and share was fantastic for me to start creating a bit of a Pinterest board. Yeah. Um, and when I had this bare shell, I mean, th there was nothing on the walls. It was just a frame. I was starting to sort of collect areas of, you know, photographs and designs that I'd seen on other tiny houses that I liked and sort of sticking them on the wall in each section. Oh, okay. going, oh, how's that going to work here? And I chalked all the floor out and I'd draw it all out all the time. And I'd tweak things and I'd sort of have a mood board for each section of the house. Yeah. The um, so that was a good visual for me. And then... A lot of it, to be honest with you, I had a design. I knew I wanted that dark colour. I knew I wanted yeah. it to feel a bit beach housey. So I knew I wanted the cladding. Yeah. Um, 
but the rest of it was sort of done throughout the build when I'd get to a space and think right that's how much I've got so what can I put here now rather than drawing every single little centimeter up front I sort of did it as I went both yeah. from a financial perspective and also just the space I was given and I go right okay what can I put there and I found some cupboards in Ikea that were really handy for a few things and it was the case of I would just try and draw inspiration from every shop that I walked in and, and yeah. every Instagram that I saw really I mean that that tiny house um page of Harry's was really really helpful and then um Bryce his Instagram that living his YouTube living big in a tiny yeah. house that was good because you'd walk through and and, I, and he talks more about you know the, the electricity and the water yeah. and and those sort of questions all those little I, details the bits that I have no idea about the bits yeah that I, you know I design a design a space no problem but a, what hot water heater no idea so yeah. um that element from him was great and um yeah it's just been it's been a sort of just youtube after youtube and there was um there was a tv program that was on in america which i was just sort of streaming over here in england when i was at university and it was just called tiny house nation yeah uh, yeah and that's actually now on netflix and i think since it's become on netflix brits have become more open to tiny houses more into it, yeah i've seen all that i've seen all those years ago they've been on the yeah television. <laughs> um so that was another good one as well just because they were actually building them you know from scratch on that tv on that tv program so that was good as well um but a lot of it was just sheer determination that i was going to do it and i was going to live in a small space and i just yeah and that was a, to be honest with you was a lot of it i love that that's really cool it's interesting it is really interesting hearing everything because i think when you when you think back on on it and you sort of say about your ideas of how you've gone through everything and how you did those mood boards as well doing that yeah. visually and putting it up onto a wall is so so helpful it's such Everyone a good idea to do that. it like, they all thought I was mad I had I had the stairs drawn like so I knew where each step was gonna yeah. be I, I, like I'd, I'd got as far as getting coat hangers and measuring the width of a coat hanger because I knew that I wanted to put my coats in there or oh, that that's the what I did for the wardrobe <laughs> yeah god it was everything had to be thought about and that everyone thought I was barky mad like my parents would walk in why are you sticking these things on the wall and I was like I'm trying to figure it's out what I'm actually it. Going to want you know when you sit in the living room what things do you want around you well I know I want a tv but I don't want yeah. a tv I knew I wanted you know a little table that I could sit and eat my dinner on so I was I was trying to sort of bring all those things into those spaces and just try and visualize it a little bit so yeah that was a, that was a really good thing to do it seemed a bit mad but it was it was a really good thing to do and drawing the stairs out helped a lot as well because I sort of knew how much space I was going to lose that's it I think that's what it is it's knowing how much space you've got and if you wanted you know more of a space say with the kitchen area and so then you could take away something from somewhere else but you could do it before getting into it I have to say though like doing that was really really good for me to do that but at the same time I think I undershot a lot of it thinking god when you draw it on a floor and you're looking at the floor thinking yes god you've not got a lot of walking space there when you when it's actually all there and the things at different levels you've got more space than you think you have to play oh, with. I see I've got you know I took everything into consideration thinking I've got to be able to pull that door open and yeah. stand in front of it with the door open so all those things were sort of thought about but it's I still had more to play with than I thought I did um just because on the floor it didn't look it didn't look like a lot it just it looked like I was cramming an awful lot of things into a small space whereas when it's actually there you're you're fine if it's yeah got more room than you think a lot more of the time. than what you think that's cool did you um did you ever work out how much it has costed you to create the build or is it something that you didn't decide to do I had a very in-depth spreadsheet everything was out for yeah um I was on a bit of a budget anyway um yeah and the, I knew what I wanted to spend on it and everything was accounted for you oh know? wow even my mugs and my plates and my my cutlery that I bought for it everything went on my spreadsheet so I know exactly to the penny what it cost me um and obviously that was all excluding labor because I only only paid one person for labor and that was an electrician and a gas man that you know I'm not risking or touching any of that yes, so, yeah and that was the only person really like labor wise that I, I paid a lot of money to and my carpenter the carpenter that we had was it was a colleague so I paid him but it was a mate's rates um so you know those sort of things I saved a lot of money on 
yeah I also lost a lot of money doing it in a global pandemic so yeah yeah because of those extra costs how yeah. much did it roughly come to in the end it was just it's 30,000 was 30,000 final final number so I bought the shell for 20 yeah uh, and I actually took out a loan to, to buy the shell and I have paid that in monthly installments ever yeah. since I had it so um that sort of a bit like a mortgage but it'll be paid off in a couple of months and it's it's done yeah and, and then I gave myself ten thousand pounds to do the inside so I I knew that's how much I wanted to spend on it so everything a lot of it was Facebook marketplace I thrifted a lot of stuff yeah yeah all that sort of thing um and then also um I just got a few things on Black Friday deals and yeah and I, I was really sort of crafty about what I knew what I wanted and, and yes. what I was going to spend money on there was one thing that I was quite extortionate on and it's um, my my wooden map and it's right in front of me here and it was it was not the cheapest of things but it's just it's so beautiful that I'm gonna have to do it so uh yeah I'll show you spin it around I it's love there. these maps if it's the one I think it is it is I think they're stunning that is oh, so beautiful so it's a company called enjoy the wood um okay and, and I'd I, my, my parents had one um years you know put up in their house a couple of years ago yeah I, I, knew I wanted one at some point when I had my own space so um yeah and then I put a sort of projector screen so it's not hidden you know I can always see it yeah but it was uh that was probably the most extortionate thing that I thought right I really want it it's a bit of artwork and, and I it's want lovely to, to have those yeah, yeah that's it and so it's almost like a feature as well I think exactly. it's yeah. really lovely everything's on show isn't it so it all had yes. to look nice um yeah. and then everything else was quite relatively reasonably priced my my hot water heater and my toilet were probably the two most expensive things that I yeah. bought so that had to be right so yeah no it's it, I'm really proud of myself for doing it for for what I did it with really and that sort of definitely yes so, yeah. definitely I think I mean in effect you have created your home for 30,000 pounds like yeah. I think it's amazing and I think that is one of the things that makes me so passionate and excited about tiny houses because if you can make a home for that amount of money I'm sure if someone really wanted to they might be able to do it even cheaper if you know if they're a trained builder or, or whatever or some people might want to spend a little bit more but even if it was under 50,000 and yeah. you've got a whole entire house I think that is something that's really special about tiny houses I really really like that and also in every sense of the word they're 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 cheaper but they're also you know more sustainable there's all that sort of stuff that comes with yeah. it but for me to do it in budget was great um I definitely could have done it cheaper I really could have done um I've, I've this this cladding which I just love it's one of my favorite things that was an, a very expensive way of doing things because yeah. it was expensive. the wood you know I was I was picking it up from all different DIYs because I already had a certain amount of packets in each, in each one <laughs> and um, so that wasn't the cheapest thing to do and it was very stressful because I'm a bit of an OCD freak and there was a lot of wood shavings for a long time which <laughs> I couldn't cope very well with um but no, there's definitely. Th I I probably could have done it for you know seven thousand rather than ten if I'd have really pushed it and really tried. But I knew I had ten thousand as a budget, and I knew that was fine for me to cope with. And I knew that in the same time I was paying off my monthly instalments for the loans. Yeah. So I knew I could do that, and that was that was more than reasonable for me. So yeah, it's good. It's worked out well. Yeah, definitely. And when you said about the loan, was it just a bank loan that you? Bank loan, you yeah, got? yeah, just a bank loan. Um. I did have I had a few conversations with my dad about it because it's 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 he's it's more his bag than me and I, I sort of said you know do, is it a mortgage do I have to take out a mortgage because it's a home yeah. uh, and we did go to the bank and explain what it was that I was buying so that they could give me the right advice but it isn't it's just a bog standard bank loan like one oh, you could amazing. take out to buy a car um so it's just been a normal bank loan with a relatively decent interest rate on it and it's just been a case of just monthly chipping away at it so Oh, yeah, it's no. great. That's a great way of doing it because not everyone has the savings and it might be that they want to do it sooner. Um, yeah. So that is a way, almost a way around that as well, which is great. It's not a lot of people when I tell them that's how I did it, because I think a lot of people, I mean, I've, I've, I've done a few different sort of news articles and things that people have reached out to me and just would like to talk about it, which has been great because I'm all about raising awareness of tiny living. Yes. I think it's great that 
Um, I mean, I've had a lot of backlash, bizarrely, of people sort of, oh, okay, bank of dad and all that sort of stuff. And and I can see why it would come across like that because it is, you know, it's not a small thing to finance at the age of 26. You know, essentially I've spent 30,000 pounds on something, which is not, you know, not every 26 year old has got that. But I tell people that I took a loan out and they they don't realise that's even something they could even consider for something yeah, like this. So that's it's it. more than reasonable. It's more than doable. And and then now I'm I'm essentially paying a mortgage off until it's paid off. It's just it's only going to take me sort of three years rather than oh, it'll take you a or, fraction of the time. Yeah, fraction exactly. of the time. So it's it's definitely something that I mean I've spoken to a few people on online and stuff, and I've said it to them: so just go get a loan, just go and do it. And, and they've yeah. done it on the house now, and it's it's nice because I think you know if you've got that money that you can do on the build, then that's yeah. great keep that money for your build and then just have your shell and make sure it's safe, make sure it's secure, make sure it's built by the right people. That's the essential bit really. So yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. And did you find that by, by doing, by doing it that way round, um, did you get, because you bought your sort of shell, did it come with the trailer base as well? Or did you have yeah. to get that separate? So you so, managed to find one that was the two together. Yeah. So it had, it had the trailer base in it. It, so it was all mounted on everything was all the shell was all complete and then there was um there was insulation in the walls and um oh, what's it called like pine boards so thick yes. thick boards ply board that's it um, yeah. and that was all in and the water tank was in so oh, I, had wow. and I also had like there was a wall in it because the lady who I bought it off she'd she'd started the build herself and didn't finish it because she moved to London I so see was in for the bathroom and that sort of thing so I had you know the, the foundations I had the first fittings for the wiring and I had the hot water not the hot water I just had the water tank yeah and shell. so I gutted it and ripped everything out from the inside because I yeah. knew I wanted to lay it out slightly differently to how she'd sort of started yeah um, so I, I gutted it but I, I had a sturdy structure with a water tank and first fittings for electricity so that side of it was done rather than me having to worry about that and then I, and then I then sort of carried on with the rest of it that's amazing and did you say it was on Facebook marketplace it or was on eBay eBay. Um, eBay yeah so the lady who um sold it she lived about 10 minutes down the road from where it was built so oh, tiny so homes is a company it's owned by a guy called Chris who lives up in Northumbria and I went and visited him and stayed in a tiny house that he'd built so when you go and have a consultation with him he sits you in a tiny house to stay there overnight to experience it oh wow and really good way of doing it because yeah you experience the space before you commit to anything so I I mapped out what my ideal scenario was and sort of talked it through with him and drew it and he took me to his workshop where he's building everything which was amazing and that's when I sort of thought right this is 100% what I want to do and I gave him my drawing and he was like it's going to cost you sort of 50 to 60 thousand for what you want and I thought yeah I just haven't got that money it's just no. not and I knew that I was only able to get a £20,000 bank loan because I've done that query already I'd found that out yeah. so it was sort of a go away and start saving you know to save the rest of it you've got 10000 make that 20 keep saving and um I just shopped around on eBay I thought someone might think about selling one I don't know yeah like, three or four months of looking online before this one came up and I straight away knew it was a tiny eco home because they're built in a very certain way you know like it's yeah. they've got a style about them um so I messaged the lady and she just said oh my intention was to always finish it myself um but I've moved to London it's been parked on the drive for over 12 months and I just I want it to go to someone that's going to live in it rather than it just sitting there empty so um yeah I I bought it directly off off that lady and then had it towed down to me so I had it professionally moved just just in case yeah and then, um and then I started chipping away at it so I mean Chris really lovely guy he was really interesting he was so helpful yeah and even down to sort of when I was doing the build I could ring him and say you've done this in this house what does what does that link to and oh not, that's lovely really, yeah really good um and, and I've sort of sent him pictures of it now saying you know it's, it's done it's complete and he said like nobody out of all the houses that he'd sent undone had finished one I was the first person to go away and wow. finish it myself. um so yeah I, I think a lot of his are done to the full extent yeah so go away I mean the one I stayed in it had a steam shower room in it it had a steam room wow in the shower. oh so wow it was, like <laughs> fitted out to premium luxury um, yeah whereas I've just got a standard normal shower <laughs> 
he's he's really helpful and he's he's really made a name for himself in the UK now building little houses um but he was really helpful and the lady who I bought it off she was just I think glad to see it go to somebody who wants to finish it yes that's it someone who she knows that it's going to be lived in it's going to be enjoyed and used as well yeah exactly exactly oh it's so lovely um how are you finding it? i mean in the uk we've had quite a few storms coming um how do you find i'm personally quite a light sleeper and i know some people could just sleep straight away and other people out there are really light sleepers how do you make it work or how do you make it quieter when it is really bad I'm weather I mean, we've had a couple of storms in it so far. I think we've had three, like major, major storms. Um, and the one, the one night, um, my partner closes his eyes, nothing will wake him. Like, absolutely, oh, okay, he's absolutely fine. I find the rain on the roof therapeutic to an extent, and then once it goes into storm mode, I'm like, oh, it's just too much noise. So I've got, I've just got ear plugs. That I just plug in. Yeah. Um, they're sort of molded to my ear, and I'm good to go. Um, the the, the one storm that we had which was about four or five months after living in this I woke up the one morning and looked out the kitchen window and I was like Craig someone's stolen the gazebo because we had this really lovely gazebo that took us five oh, hours no. and it was amazing and it was really good for outside and I said, someone stolen the gazebo uh, and it wasn't it had just blown over the fence in the <laughs> night um, and I hadn't heard it go or anything so um yeah I mean the noise is fine for me but I quite like the rain I, I find it therapeutic and I yeah, used to quite it relaxing in, in my like off my phone before so but there is a point where it goes from being relaxing to being really loud and obviously you're yeah. very close to the roof up there so it, yeah sometimes it's like oh god um but we're, we're just parked next to the barn so we tend to have quite a bit of shelter from the wind from the, yeah that's quite good because the wind tends to blow this way and we don't tend to get it and uh, there's been one one night where we were moving a little bit but I'm on stabilizers so we don't really move that much I was more aware of storms once I had this puppy and sort of she was awake in the night thinking what yeah the what is going on yeah but after the second or third like, sort of rainy night she sort of understood what was happening and she was fine but um yeah no I'm I'm all right I'm aware of it and sometimes I get a bit bored and put my earphones in but Craig just passes out when he's gone and he's asleep so. <laughs> he's lucky <laughs> very lucky but I mean I do I do worry about a few things I like if it was raining too much I think oh god like, I'd hear something flapping and instantly think right yeah gross. um but generally it's just a leaf this is something as small as a leaf that's just sort of caught in the guttering or something um but no we've been all right we're quite sheltered with that barn which was all part of the strategy where I parked it anyway to be honest so we've been all right touch wood ah oh, <laughs> touch wood that's really really yeah. good and um you've said about how you would if you could do it again, you would do the um, composting toilet if you didn't have the vision of Airbnb. Um, would you ever, if you were doing it again or doing another one, would you ever go completely off grid with it? Yeah, um, it was a budget thing before, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah. Um, I looked into solar panels, I looked into rainwater collection and it was all just a budget thing. It's very yeah. expensive to get those things fitted. So I did the best of what I could. So I, I make sure yeah. that we kept our water usage. I make sure we're careful with our power. Like my, my hair dryer is a low wattage yeah. hair dryer, everything like that. Um, but yeah, no, I think if I was to do it again, I had the budget, I would absolutely look at go. This is this has all been wired to be able to be off grid. So eventually yes. I can put some solar panels on it once I've got a bit more money. Yeah, in the you could just add to it. Yeah, I've, I've planned for it to be able to be added to. That's always yeah. been the intention. So the, 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 um, the batteries all powered that it could link to solars and that sort yeah. of thing so there is that intention it would be quite nice if it could be off grid by the time it becomes airbnb because you know it'd just be a nicer story to tell but i think yeah it was it was completely budget to be honest with you if, if i could i would have done i really would that's yeah no it makes perfect sense though it really does um on my instagram community i always like to ask people to invite them to ask a question to yourself and they would like to ask you where do I start to create my own tiny house in the UK so you've told us your story of how you bought yours on eBay and got a loan which I think is really refreshing to hear um, and it certainly makes it feel more doable as well if you haven't already got those sort of building and labour skills and things like that 
Is there anything else that you feel is a really helpful starting point for people? I think go and stay in one and go and, you know, if you can find somebody that you can stay in an Airbnb or if you can rent something overnight, having that 24 hour period with Chris at Tiny Eco Homes was massively influential in the decision yeah. I made about tiny living because it all looks lovely and fun and games on Instagram and you know we're all we're all suckers for it I'm yeah. right there making it look as big as possible when I'm taking photos and I think until you're in it and you're actually experiencing life in a small home you don't know what it's going to be like and it's a different way of living so I would say go and stay in one you know book it for four or five days take your washing that you need to do and, and yeah. all that sort of stuff and um, that would be a good place to start and then I think if you if you're fine to finance it yourself amazing go for it but I, I do think look at loans they're really helpful yeah. they take the pressure off when it comes to actually doing the build because if you 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 are going to spend more money than you think you're going to spend things are going yeah. to go wrong that you know there's going to be a, a small hole in the wall that's going to cause a massive leak or someone's going to slip with a tool and there's going to be things that are going to go wrong and your heart is going to get broken over and over yeah. again so I think it's having that sort of mentality of a little bit of spare money for those things that are going to go wrong and also just going for it like just bite the bullet and go for it because just once you do it, it it's just amazing um it was a long slog it was hard work there's a lot of tears there was a lot of sweat um but it was worth every single every single penny and every single bit of tears and every single bit of sweat because I just I'm so proud of it now but it, it, I would just bite the bullet and go for it once you've got your land sorted and once you've tried the living just go for it oh I love that and do you find that where well, later on you know you've got your vision of doing the Airbnb will you be staying somewhere else whilst it's being Airbnb'd out and is that for you to have a way to be able to generate an income just briefly so then you could go back into living into the same space exactly yeah so for, I mean I'm, I've never I've never sugarcoated it to anybody I've never sort of said to people I intend to live in a tiny house the rest of my life because I know it's not feasible for the type of lifestyle that I live I, yeah. I'd like a family and I you know I've got dogs and it's not ever ever going to be a long-term thing for me and I'm quite realistic about that with people yeah what will be long term is the way that I've learned to live so minimally and I will yeah. do that when I'm in a bricks and mortar house that's not, yeah that's not going to change um, but no, my, my plan was to always have it as a bit of an income, steady income, running an Airbnb, but also I'd like to sort of give people the opportunity to have that experience that I had by staying yeah. in a tiny house. And I think the first thing that I would do is reach out to people that I talk to on Instagram and say, right, come and stay in it. Just come yeah. and experience it, you know, just come and live in it for a week, Airbnb it and just try it. Because I think a lot of people are not quite sure what they're going to get themselves into. Yeah that's always been a bit of an intention for me um, yeah it's not available to people it's just you know there's shepherd huts and that sort of thing but there's not there's, there's not, not a lot of them is there anything. no yeah you go on a holiday and that's amazing but it's not living in something and it's not I, I think I'd like to do that that was always sort of a bit of a plan for me and um, I'd like to do another build I'd really love to do that yeah. and I'm, I'm going to need to finance that somehow so Airbnb would help me finance that definitely so yeah I think it's it's I don't know where it's gonna go I really don't I think I'd like to I ideally I'd like to be out of it by sort of the middle of next year so 2022 yeah um, just purely from a financial perspective of the fact that I, I'd like to start earning some money out of it by yeah. that point I know my yeah. loan will be off at that point so I'll be at zero yeah. um and it would be quite nice to be able to sort of get myself getting a bit of money out of it to be able to just do the next one because yeah. I, I, I love the build I the, when I thought about it and thinking about this before I was talking to you yeah uh, I I hated the build but I was doing it because I was so desperate to get in so quickly because yeah yeah it's on my mind all the time and things kept going wrong and I, and I hated it at the time and I was so upset about it all the time um and there was this one day when my partner said to me Grace what's the rush what what's the rush you know we've got a roof over our heads granted it was in my parents house because it was COVID yeah, yeah, yeah. they go into their own home we, we were sort of commuting between the two um and he just just enjoy it like what's the rush you know I know you want to be in it but what is the rush and yeah I sort of thought to myself yeah what what actually is the rush and um from that point on which was sort of you know um, two months into this build I was like I slowed down and, and enjoyed every step of it and made sure to not just buy the first pot of paint, but to look into it, to know that yes. it's going to last longer. And 
I just I suddenly fell in love with doing this project which was amazing and if I think if he hadn't said to me whoa you know yeah I probably wouldn't have had that same passion but I think next time I do it it will be done with a different mentality of again I'd like to do like a tiny red next time or a tiny yeah. green you know, like a bit of a community um, definitely and it would be there'd be a different end goal there there'd be you know I'd stay in it for a little bit and I'd have it and and then I would Airbnb it out and it would be nice to create a community where I could say to people come and experience it come and yeah. come and live in it for six months if you want rent it for a whole semester when you're yeah. at university yeah 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 um, and eventually have a field full of them with a, a HQ, you know, all that sort of stuff. I'd, yes. I'd love to do anything like that. Um, but yeah, I'll just see where the wind takes me with it, really. I've, yeah. I've always been realistic with myself. It's never forever. Um, but no, it's, it's it's great. I just, I love it at the moment. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I've, been, I've sort of put the feelers out to see what would happen. And I've just sort of bottled it. And not done anything <laughs> about it because it's just, it's my home and I just love it. So. Oh, I love that. I think it's so inspiring. It's so lovely to hear. And it's really lovely to hear like how passionate you are about it and that you have done it and you've still got that passion. And all the goals that you've got for the future are fantastic. And I, definitely think they're all going to happen um, and it's exciting it's really exciting I love that um I always like to ask a question at the end of each podcast which is a sustainability question and it is sustainability wise what do you wish that you or we had more of composting toilets yes <laughs> I've used a few of them now I've got this is a sort of different friends that have got different tiny houses okay uh, great and that is a great way of being sustainable um so I think more composting toilets yeah I also just think the mentality that tiny house mentality you'll have it being a van lifer I think everybody if they had 10% of that mentality would change the world because yes. I just you you have so much more awareness about how you live your life and what water usage you're using and yes. everything down to sort of how many lights I've got on and all that sort of stuff and and I think if if everybody had just a small amount of that that sort of thought process I think that would definitely just I think it have a massive massive impact because you don't really realize it until you're living like it that you think god I, I just would leave my hair straighteners plugged in you know turn yeah, in simple things everything like that and yeah. when I was building this I had to count in the amount of allowable wattage so I had to count everything in as, it, as I was plugging things in one by one I had to think right where's my limit yeah um, I think if we had that ability to do that in every house we've you know ever been in I think all of those things would make a massive difference but yeah so composted toilets and tiny house mentality yeah board would be great. I think yeah I think those are both really two very good answers and it's so true it's like you say if everyone just had that mentality and and that's the thing with with your future idea of having those tiny houses that will allow people to have that so even if they just go to state and there might be people who haven't even got the intentions of building one themselves but they might take away from staying in one of your tiny houses in the future that mentality so I think yeah. even just people staying in these small spaces in these tiny houses would I mean, start I, to do that yeah I know I, I completely agree I, I had that light bulb moment when I was at university and um, and suddenly I was paying all the bills of the, of the university halls and all that sort of stuff and and I suddenly became so so hyper aware of things that yes um, and then my friend who had this living boat at university I I suddenly you know I'd go and stay with her and she was lighting candles for, for light in the evening because she was saving power yeah and that sort of my light bulb moment and just like you said that was the start of the trigger for me to go right I've got to I've got to change the way I live here and I've got to make a few differences and I think I, if people had that experience and they had this living in a tiny house experience I think they would probably just make small change changes it yeah. have to you don't have to put solar panels up straight away no. and, um, but to make a really small change would be a nice sort of way for everyone to go about things so, oh yeah, definitely no. definitely oh Grace thank you so much for joining me today it's so lovely to chat to you oh no you're so welcome for anyone who would like to find out more about you you've got an Instagram haven't you I do yes yeah that's and, where I'm most active all the time oh fantastic and your Instagram is is tiny house isn't it tiny house, tiny house underscore, underscore 
UK. UK. Tiny house underscore UK. Perfect. Oh, Grace, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. That was so lovely chatting to you. I felt so inspired. One of my like my next goals is like how I would like to have a house. And for me, like I would love to build a tiny house. And I thought about it ages ago. And then I sort of put the idea to the back of my mind because I thought, oh, how do I find spaces? How do I find land? And things like that. And I thought, oh, and you you have that thing where you go, oh, I've hit a wall. Okay. So, and then other things happen and you get on with life. And yeah. I, I've spoken to yourself and I spoke to another guy called um, Jeffrey, the sustainable builder. And he's building a tiny house as well. And you've both built these spaces, but how you've built them are in two different ways. And it's really interesting. And it, it actually shows people that there are different ways of doing it. You know, if you don't, for example, Jeffrey, he is a builder. He's got those skills. So all those labor costs are taken away for him. But then if you're a person who doesn't have those skills, people think well how do I do that if I if I can't build so it's really interesting because I I have looked in the past at places where this tiny house is where they're already built and it's the shell and you can choose to have it completely done or you just buy the shell but again I then had the same thing that you had which was the cost of it and I thought oh my god how do I do that and um so it's really interesting because um I have with Stitcher the brand and how the shop started and now it's gone into the podcast I have a uh, startup business loans that I pay with that and I've never yeah. thought about putting that into my like personal life yeah. so it's really really interesting because I I'm like just myself like, I'm not with anyone not with a partner and people always go oh it's really really hard it's harder because you don't have those two incomes coming in and I'm like no there is a way to do it but that is like a light bulb moment for me of ah oh, actually that's the way to do it yeah I mean my my partner um he hasn't had any financial invest in this at all I always wanted it to be mine oh he I see own the house so oh amazing uh, the point that we'd have arguments about it because I'd be getting there with my spreadsheet he's going Grace I've got that hundred pound I can lend you I'm like, like no no, no <laughs> my house. I'm doing it on my own um, it was that was always sort of a thing for me of like once I got that loan and I knew that that was there that yeah. was really handy for me and then I just knew that everything else could be sorted and budgeted and I think like you just said people don't think about it they don't even consider yeah. that as an option it's got to be bought outright and it, and it, it doesn't it, and I, I've I've got no skills I mean my, my university degree was primary education and I've done a bit of makeup here and there and I've done I now make gin um yeah I've, I've never had any experience of anything I, t until last year I'd never changed a tire on my car so oh amazing no experience when it comes to building at all and I threw myself into it YouTube is the best thing in the world it yeah. really is so yeah helpful. and I think people shouldn't shouldn't neglect that because no that's it you can do it's a, a good tool isn't it yeah definitely. really good tool and um I think now I'm going to be looking on eBay when I wake up in the middle of the night because <laughs> that's definitely made me think oh I've got another place that I can look now and it's like you said where you save the money for the build part of it um you know it just makes it more doable and it makes it more feasible I know that um I'm very different to my brothers in the sense that my, my brothers are older and they've got families and one of them rents their house and then the other one has just bought their own house but they have a mortgage and they're like Nicole like don't worry just get a flat if you need to and they, they're I love my brothers because they care so much for me and my sister-in-laws as well um but when I hear the idea of getting a mortgage there's something that really like makes me go oh I don't want to pay a mortgage at the moment and pay it yeah. for like the rest of my life and I know so many people who Airbnb whether it's a flat or house or space out and that actually builds them either a deposit or pays off a mortgage faster if they do decide to go down that route and I started thinking about oh maybe I should save a deposit to get a flat that I then Airbnb out to then build the tiny house but really you're basically doing that but the flip side round you're doing the tiny house first airbnb it out and then if you want to then getting your other space yeah. which I think is great yeah, I mean I, I 
some people would say you sort I've sort of compromised on not living in a home um and and, and compromised to live in here for 12 months to pay it off as such but I always wanted to live in it and I wanted yeah. to have that experience so I, I you know I've, I've not really missed out on anything doing how I've done it I've just I've got a little bit of interest on the loan rather yeah. than just paying out on outright I think by, by the time I finished paying it off I think it works out to be about 24 rather than 20,000 okay but over a couple of years that's not that much in total really no. I might, I might put it wrong there I think it's a little bit lower I think it's about 23 23.2 or something like that so you know it's like I paid a couple of thousand pound more in dragging it out but yes. it's been manageable for me this whole time I've constantly had that set amount going out every month that I've been able to change if I wanted to the bank yeah it's just sort of direct out. debit just goes out yeah continuously exactly. yeah uh, so I, I don't notice it's gone missing I don't notice it's not there so yeah that side of it is fine for me and then I just slowly but surely just chip away at it until it's gone so yeah, yeah. that's it and it does it's surprising how even for example 100 pounds in a year that's a thousand depending on what the interest is you know it slowly does just just go which yeah. is really interesting I know with my business loans I took two out and I always say to myself oh if I did it again I would have taken just one out or none or but you do all these things as you're learning and things like that but it is slowly just paying itself off which is yeah, amazing I think cool. one of them's already nearly paid off which is great amazing so, that's yeah amazing. that's it that's it so oh thank you so much I know that you've got a meal today so I will let you yeah. go and um get ready for that but thank you thank for you. chatting to me no, thank you so much for having me that no, was oh. really really pleasant.